Hello, I am doing another tutorial video for Escape Simulator Room Editor. This is about multi slot puzzles. Um, as I imagine, everyone knows how to do a single slot puzzle, pretty basic. But multi slot puzzle, also basic, but it isn't something that really, that it, sorry, it isn't something that is really covered in tutorial videos. At least of what I found. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Like, so green goes to this, red goes to this, yellow goes to this. I'm going to show you how to make a multi slot puzzle where nothing happens when they're in the wrong order, but when they're all in the right order, uh, something happens. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to remove the slots and show you how. Hello. So. Yeah, I'm here. I removed the slots and the lock tied to it. I've also added a, a blue figure to help me demonstrate this. So, obviously, to make a multi-slot puzzle, first you need a slot. So, get a slot down, scale it down to whatever size you want. The scaling of the slot doesn't change the size of the object, so you don't need to worry about that. So, you have your slot here, and you have your figures, the things that are supposed to go on the slots. So you want the green slot so let's say you want this figure to be a key for this slot. So you hit keys and then the green figure. What this does is it makes this what triggers the slots lock. So when this is in place, whatever number this slot is tied to, it triggers that number. Yeah confirm. So now if you play, this can go in place, which that's sideways, I'll need to fix that. But this can now go in the slot. But you can't place it back once you put it in originally. So let me just fix that. If you want to be able to put the, the piece back on the slot once you initially put the key on, you're going to want to go to unlock success and hit keep slot. What this does is once you unlock the slot with the correct item, you keep the slot allowing you to still put things in the slot. So now if I put the green piece there, take it out, I can still put it back in. But let's say you want something to be a reject key right here. What a reject key is, is something that can go on the slot but doesn't activate the lock. It's supposed to be a possibility object is kind of what I call it. And what that is, is something that is part of the puzzle, but not for this specific slot. It's a possibility. Now, if you, if you, sorry, a rigid key doesn't mean that it can't go in the slot. In fact, if it's not a reject key, it can't go in the slot. It's, it's, this piece is not tied to the slot in any way, and so it cannot go into the slot. If you want a possibility, some like you have your puzzle, and then there's like three different objects, one slot, and only one of them is a correct object, you're going to want the other incorrect answers, incorrect uh, pieces to still go in the slot to try and trick the person. So let's say you want these two to be able. Let's say you want these two to be able to go in the slot, but not activate the lock. You want to go to reset keys, and then select the two pieces or how many pieces you have that are go that will go in the slot but not activate it. So now we have the green piece being the real key, and the red and yellow piece being the fake keys. So now if we go into play, we have the Green, pe green key, which goes into slot. And then we have the red key, which goes into slot, but isn't the correct key, and so is the yellow key. And then the blue key, which isn't part of the slot at all, showing that it needs to be a key or a reject key to, act to uh, touch the slot. Now let's say you don't want the key, the reject key, to pop back out once you put it in. That way the player doesn't know, hey, this isn't the right key. What you want to do is, if you fail to unlock the key, the unlock failed, what this is, is if you put a reject key in the slot. 
because it, eject it ejects after a second or two. Now, if you want the wrong key to stay in the slot to try and trick the player, then what you want to do is hit parent. Because then, if you have the reject keys as parent, it'll stay in the slot until you take it out. That way the player doesn't know which slot, which item for the slot is correct or wrong. Now obviously if we want a multi-slot puzzle, we'll need multiple slots. So just duplicate this How m however many times you need, whether it be three or four, you know. Obviously we're gonna need to fix the key situation, so so we'll have the yellow key, the yellow piece be a key for this slot. And we'll have these two as reject keys so they can go in the slot but won't activate the lock. And then this one we have the red the red piece be the key for the slot right here. And then we'll have the yellow and green key, uh, green piece as reject keys. So now if we go in each piece can go in each slot and they can go in other slots too but there's only one correct order for them now obviously we need a lock to tie this to so we're gonna get a lock once more scale it down I don't know why it spawns so big but it does Oops. and now once you have your lock you're gonna want to make a number for each slot. So we have three slots, we'll need three numbers. So one, two, three. It doesn't matter what number it is, but once you have your number for each slot, you need to designate the slots to that number. So this is the first slot, so we want it to the first number. So on place. What this means is once the correct key is on the place, it triggers a number. And when the yellow key, the and when the yellow piece is on this slot, we want it to trigger the first number. And the same for this, but for the second number, and for the third number. So now we have our slots, our pieces, reset keys, and a lock for each slot. So let's say you get all three in the correct order. Well, nothing will happen because this lock isn't designated to anything. So we're going to designate it some. So when we get all three keys and all three slots correctly, correctly, sorry about that, it'll trigger this drawer to pop out. So I already have it set to animation, and I have the waypoint already set to pop out like that. But we need to assign this lock to this draw. So when all three numbers are set to one in the correct order, it'll unlock this drawer. It'll make it pop out. So now when we get these three in the correct order, this lock will trigger this drawer to pop out. So if we put the red here, the green here, and the yellow here, nothing will happen. But if we put the red and green in the correct spots, drawer comes out. And since this blue isn't part of it, part of the slots, it can't can't connect into it. Now I'm just gonna go over a few of the things in here that I didn't cover. Now let's say you don't like the way the key is. You don't like its position but you don't want to move the slot. You could just hit edit key placement and move it around. The slot will be in the same spot but the key will go into a different area. So now the green key when you place it in this area like you can't hover over this but you have to hover over this to place it there. It'll now do that. But um, that is the basics of a multi-slot puzzle, the basics of a basic thing. 
easy to understand, easy to do. So each piece goes into a slot while the other pieces are set as reject keys which go into the slot still but don't activate the number. When all three numbers are activated it triggers a slot which triggers an animation or whatever which is a um, really common thing to see. Obviously how else would a lock do anything but yeah that's a multi-slot lock. My apologies for being messy as I think I was today but that's a multi-slot puzzle. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helps and I hope you have a good day.